just finished shooting your new, new DVD. Can you give us a brief overview of what it's about? Well, it's really about uh, how to become a precision sawyer. And I think a lot of woodworkers really worry that they have to have a lot of superpowers or super skills to uh, saw really effectively. When the truth is all they really need to do is choose the right saw, have it set up the right way with the right teeth, and then know the tricks that a lot of people have forgotten as to how to do accurate work. And I've spent the last, I don't know, how many years sort of digging into the historical record, learning about saws, um, getting into um, all of the, the craft ways and um, you know, ancient sort of traditions that uh, people used to become really good sawyers because people needed tricks then, too. You seem to be very passionate about saws. Where did your passion for hand saws come from? I can tell you where, where it didn't come from. Um, well, when I was a kid, my, uh, my parents decided to like go hippie style and get this farm out in the middle of nowhere, and we didn't have electricity or water or anything, and so we built the houses on that farm completely by hand. And we had only one handsaw, and it was this piece of junk that my dad still has. And that's what we did. sawed everything to length. We even did ripping with that. And that was the first saw we had. And um, I learned to saw, learned a little bit of sharpening it to tune it up. And uh, that's you know why I really wanted to buy a table saw. But after um, you know getting out of college and getting back into woodworking, I really you know sort of fell back into it and uh, sort of rediscovered it. And so uh, you know ever since then, I, you know I've, I've really. Uh, bought a lot of saws and used a lot of saws and, and think they are just one of the most important tools in your kit. Now, let's say I'm going to go out and buy a saw and there's so many on the market. There's brand new saws, there's vintage saws. What's the advantage of maybe buying a vintage saw or a new saw or vice versa? Yeah, um, that's a question I get a lot. And, you know, the differences between a vintage and a new saw, um, you know, they're, they're pretty important. Um, like this, uh, this vintage back saw, um, you know, one of the things that we talk about in the DVD is how a, you know, a shiny saw plate can really be used to help you set up your cut and get, make sure it's straight. And so you know, if you're going to buy a vintage saw, you're going to want one that has a saw plate that's as, as clean as possible. Um, you know, a new saw will come with a you know, very nice shiny saw plate that you just have to maintain. The other thing that happens uh, to, with vintage saws is that the saw plate gets warped because some monkey or gorilla uh, you know, used the saw improperly and kinked it. And so when, if you buy a vintage saw, and this is why you know, I don't buy vintage saws on eBay, is that you, you, know, you should really be able to sight down the, the saw plate and see a straight line. You know, a real gentle curve is okay, um, but you don't want to see a wave. A gentle curve just usually means it was put on a fully, uh, fully saw filing machine and that all, sort of gives it a real gentle curve. Um, so the, you know, that can be all munged up. Uh, the other problem with vintage saws is that uh, you know, the nuts can be loose and you know, there's nothing worse than uh, reamed out loose nuts. And so there's not a lot of ways to fix that. So you, know, you, you want the t handle to be able to be completely tightened so uh, those are sort of the, the, the disadvantages or the things you have to look for when you're, when you're buying a, uh, a vintage saw. But the, you know, the advantage is, is that there are tons of them out there. Uh, they're, they're relatively low in price. They can be fixed up. Uh, you just have to be careful about which ones you buy. And that's why new saws are more expensive is because there's no risk. So, um, so let's say I buy a new saw. What's the best way to keep that saw plate fresh and clean and clear? Yeah, that's another question I get a lot. Um, you know, when you have, you want to keep the saw plate shiny because not only does it help you with, you know, seeing if you're straight, but also if it's not covered in rust, it moves smoother through the work. And you really need to wipe down your saw after, you know, not, if not every use, every day before you put it away because uh, saws are really high carbon steel and high carbon steel is just a magnet for rust. And then the other problem is that dust, which is in the air that lands on your saw, uh, can frequently have salt in it. And salt absorbs moisture from your shop environment and then that's how pitting starts on the saw plate. So really the, 
you know, there's no one product you need to use. Uh, I mean, you can use a three-in-one oil, you can use WD-40, you can use uh, Camilla oil, you can use jojoba oil. Any of those sort of non-drying vegetable oils are fine. You just got to keep a rag around, wipe it down, and that'll keep a real thin, uh, you know, barrier between the shop environment and the, and the steel. And then a lot of people are going to ask me after that, is that, well, won't that oil interfere with finishing? And the answer is I, I haven't in all my years of sawing ever found any of that to be a problem. And usually all the oil goes away on the f very first cut anyway. So really the answer is vigilance. Now for a lot of people it seems like keeping a saw sharp is, it seems to be the biggest barrier for using a hand saw. Should I learn how to sharpen my own saws? What's the advantage of, of sharpening your own saws over having somebody else do it? This is yeah, um, I really think everybody should learn to sharpen their own saws. And there's a lot of people who resist it because they think it's difficult. They think there's a lot of special equipment you need. Um, they think it's going to take them years to, to sort of pick up the skills. And there are a lot of angles, and that, that seems like math or geometry. Uh, the truth is it's really straightforward. And you know, you'll, your first saw that you file might stink. But the second one will probably be completely usable. And uh, the trick is just to buy a good saw vise, uh, buy good saw files, and buy a crappy saw for five bucks and practice on it. Uh, the real advantage to learning to sharpen your saws is that once you understand you know, rake and uh, fleam and, uh, uh, and pitch, and you also understand how to uh, deepen the gullets by angling the, the saw file, is you can make a saw do almost anything you want, and you can really fine tune it uh, to your work and, and the woods you use. So absolutely, learn to file. Good. Now a lot of these things are gonna be covered in, in your new DVD, but I also understand you have a new book that you're working on? Yeah, yeah, I'm working on a, a couple new books, but the, the next one, which should be out, here by the uh, fourth quarter of 2010 is going to be on tool chests and uh, this, the kit of hand tools that you need to put in them. And just like I did with the workbench book, uh, I've, I've spent the last few months sort of researching all the old rules for uh, designing tool chests and trying to find out what it is that we as a society uh, forgot uh, now that we use all these sort of crazy wall chests and craftsmen. Uh, you know, sliding drawer uh, chests, and uh, I'm going to be building some old school uh, chests and talking about the tools that you really need to put in them and why you should focus on buying fewer tools, but tools that are of really much better quality. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Thank you. Connor. It's been a good week. Absolutely.